Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I am here today with a brand new video. We've done this at all four Disney parks. We've done it at Universal Studios Florida and now we are at Universal's Islands of Adventure to have the best day ever. Throughout the day today, we are going to share tips and tricks and secrets to have your best day at Islands of Adventure. And we got some big rides to tackle. We got Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. We've got the brand new Velocicoaster, the Incredible Hulk Coaster. So much fun in this park. How can you maximize your day and have the best day ever? Let's find out. It is 9 a.m. now. The park just officially opened. But keep in mind that the park actually opened at 8 for resort guests and certain levels of annual pass holders um, for early park hours. And with early park hours, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, Ollivander's Flight of the Hippogriff, and The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man all open. But I also was looking at the wait times around 8.15, 8.30, and Velocicoaster had a posted wait as well, which makes me think they opened Velocicoaster early. So because of that, we are not going to either Velocicoaster or Hagrid's to start the morning. While I do have an annual pass that would have gotten me in at eight o'clock, I assume most people coming to Universal are coming for one day or a few days and they're not staying on property. They're probably staying at Disney and coming over for a day or two, which I actually think is a mistake and we'll get into that in a little bit. But because in theory, Hagrid's and Velocicoaster have already been open for an hour, Hagrid's already has a two hour wait and Velocicoaster already has a 75 minute wait. So we are headed to another big coaster. Hint, which just opened at nine o'clock with the park and it only has a posted 15 minute wait. So that's your first hot tip. Don't rope drop Hagrid's or Velocicoaster if you're not gonna stay on property, rope drop Hulk. Incredible Hulk Coaster, Hulk Coaster, Hulk Coaster has a 54 inch height requirement. It's one of the original amazing thrills here at Islands of Adventure. This will kick it up a notch. If you're used to Disney coasters, let's just say it's a scooch more intense. Posted 15 minute wait. We're gonna go get a locker right now and get to it. At Universal, there's several attractions that are so intense you can't bring on your things. And some of them you can't even bring phones or fanny packs or lanyards. You go through a metal detector and the Hulk is one of them. So I'll see y'all on the other side. off the incredible Hulk coaster in about 20 minutes. It's already posted 35, which is still not very long for Hulk. So I do think so far, my best advice to Islands of Adventure is if you will not be here for early park admission, again, you don't have a, uh, a preferred or higher level annual pass, or you are not staying at a resort. If you are just coming for the day, I'm, my best advice so far, if early park hours are happening here, you need to go here to Hulk and to Marvel Landing as opposed to Hogsmeade or Jurassic because everybody's already over there. We're going to wait for them to leave, and then we're going to go up there. That's, that's the plan so far. Um, and we're going to continue having fun in Marvel Landing right now. Now that we've knocked out the Incredible Hulk, we're going to head over to the next most thrilling attraction here in Marvel Landing. That's the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. It has a 25 minute wait right now, and this one did open up with early park hours, but um, it still doesn't have super long wait. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man has a 40-inch line, this, or a 40-inch high requirement. This is a 3D simulator attraction based on the Spider-Man comics, where you are going to help Peter Parker, aka Spidey, tackle the bad guys. This attraction, like all of Marvel Landing, is themed after Marvel the comics, not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So think comic book Peter Parker, not sweet baby angel Tom Holland. 
a lot of people do ask why is there a Spider-Man and a Hulk and a whole Marvel land in Universal if Disney owns Marvel. And it's actually very, very interesting. Disney didn't own Marvel, obviously, when Islands of Adventure was built, so Marvel and Universal had a contract together. But then when Disney bought Marvel, they had to work it into the contract that Universal could maintain their lands here since this is an established part of their brand as well. So the rule is that in a theme park, east of the Mississippi, aka Walt Disney World, they cannot have Marvel characters represented except for like in merchandise that are represented here on Marvel Landing. So that's why Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind can exist in Epcot. Guardians of the Galaxy, you will not find them anywhere in this land except for possibly in merchandise. You won't see them in the decor, you won't see them in attractions. That's why they can do Guardians of the Galaxy, but that's why you're never gonna get the new Spider-Man attraction in Avengers Campus in Disneyland. You're never gonna get that in Walt Disney World because Spider-Man is used here at Universal. The plot of this attraction is that uh, the bad guys have taken over, as bad guys in comics usually do. And you are going out as a reporter for the Daily Scoop to get the story. And you're gonna go out in the Scoop Mobile, which is a cool little vehicle. It'll make you nauseous if you get motion sick, which I do. I'm actually finding this queue very enjoyable. You must either turn, in, Midnight Deadline, either turn in your final story copy or your resignation. You don't want a Pulitzer by sitting on your associated character, so get moving. It's very funny in here. So we're on the copy room floor of the Daily Bugle, and bad things are happening. There are bad guys doing bad guy things. I don't know all of them because I'm a recent fan of the MCU, and I'm only involved as far as the Marvel Cinematic Universe goes. But I do know who Peter Parker is, so that's what matters. Here is an example of the Scoop Mobile. If you've been on Transformers the Ride 3D over at Universal Studios Florida, this is the exact same technology. In fact, this one existed first. It's very cool technology. It's a combination of real sets and projections and simulators, and it's all 3D. And you're gonna fight these guys. Maybe not him, I don't know who that is. He seems mean though, right? Worldwide Conquest, that sounds like a villain. I don't really know what they want. I think they want the city. I don't ever really know what the supervillains want. I understood what Thanos wanted, but these guys are just angry, I think. Here's the thing. We're being sent out in the Scootmobile to help fight the supervillains. I'm not qualified for this. I don't need training fighting supervillains. I do have training as a journalist. It's part of my job to report for Disney and Universal News. So I'm, I do have training there, but I don't feel good about my abilities to fight supervillains. It feels irresponsible that we're being sent out on this job, but I mean, I'll, I'll try my best. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. If you're a Spider-Man fan, I definitely think you're gonna wanna ride it. It is fun and it's cool technology. However, it makes me nauseous, so I just use the chicken exit. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you. Um, but it ended up being closer to 30 minutes, not 25, but um, when I looked at the app whilst uh, in the queue, I saw that it was up to 35, so it was closer to 30, but still, we have done two very big popular attractions in Islands of Adventure, and the park's only been officially open for about an hour, so we are going well. Now, since we just rode Spider-Man's ride, except we didn't because it makes me nauseous, but in theory, you just, point of view, you just rode Spider-Man's ride because you're using these great tips to have a fun day. And now you want to go say hi to Spider-Man? You can do that. He has moved back to his original spot for photos and such. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to like give him a high five. I think it's still going to be distanced, but let's check it out. All right, so I'm about to be let in. They're letting one party in at a time. Hi. hi, Spidey. I am talking to some people. I thought they might want to say hi to you. Hi, people of unknown origin and or name. Yeah. How do, how do you know these people? I don't know them. Oh my They're goodness. just on the internet. Oh, in yeah. Case. Hi, people of the internet. <laughs> Take me to your leader. Who is yeah. that these days, anyone? Zuckerberg, <laughs> I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think he blinked. I did actually. Okay. 
That was pretty sweet. Waited about 10, 15 minutes to meet Spider-Man. That's the closest I've seen to like a character meet and greet since the parks reopened. He is still barricaded off. You can't like touch him or give him a high five or anything, but you can still take selfies with him. Um, and then there's also a green screen if you want to get a picture with that and they'll like superimpose you into the Spider-Man universe. But that was cool. So it's a, been a great first part of the morning. Lots of Marvel fun. Let's keep it going. Gonna round out our time in Marvel Landing before we go and do Doctor Doom's Fear Fall. It's only a 10 minute wait, so why not? Doctor Doom's Fear Fall is a drop attraction similar to Tower of Terror, but not really at all except for the fact they're both drop towers. Basically, this one you're gonna shoot up really fast, which is the fun part of Doctor Doom, and then uh, come down a little bit slower, but the, the shoot up, you don't know when it's gonna happen and it's very startling. Dr. Doom's Fear Fall only has a 10 minute wait right now and they have the single rider line open. It has a 52 inch height requirement. I would say, um, as with a lot of rides here at Universal, definitely test the seat out. There are some more restrictive seats here at Universal, so I always recommend sitting in the test seat if you're concerned you might be uncomfortable. And then it's only a 10 minute wait, but there's also single rider, which means your party will be separated, but you will likely go much faster. We're gonna go through the regular queue though, just because it's only 10 minutes. Single Rider is a great tool that you can use to maximize your day at Universal. Um, basically, your line will likely be a lot less, but your party will be split because you're just gonna fill in seats for um, odd numbered parties. So if the line isn't very long for an attraction, I definitely still recommend going in the regular queue because it's always more fun to ride with your family and your friends. Um, but if it's an attraction you're not, you've been on before or has a really long line, you may want to check out Single Rider. Um, hello, gentlemen. Do you know which way to the tower? Okay, this way, thank you. This is spooky. Wow, they are not being subtle with this messaging. Dr. Doom wants to be the supreme leader of the free world. That is like ambitious. He's not just like, I want to take over this city like the guys over at Spider-Man. No, he's like supreme leader of the free world for me, please. All right, that's, we're already at the top. We're gonna sort us, so that's definitely not 10 minutes, which is great. And uh, it's time to face the tower. This ride is really cool if you are not scared of heights and want a cool view of Universal. It's very fun. But if you are scared of heights, I, I wouldn't, you know? Well, we are done on Marvel Landing. We got to ride the Hulk, Spider-Man, and Doctor Doom, and see Spider-Man himself. Very exciting, very fun way to start the day. And now we are gonna go for our first Feeding. You know, I love a good feeding at a theme park. It's part of the best day. I'm gonna go have a little brunch action. The dish we're gonna get, I consider to be both a breakfast and a lunch delight. This brunch is actually gonna be a two-parter. It's gonna be a two-part extravaganza. Part one, the most important part, arguably coffee. So we are here in the Starbucks to order a nice coffee and then we're gonna take it over to our brunch location. A little wait time update for you. The longest line in the park right now is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM at 80 minutes. Um, Velocicoaster is at 75. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is at 60. Flight of the Hippogriff is also at 60. Um, Hulk went up to 60, so I'm glad we got that one out of the way. Spider-Man's up to 45, so glad we got that one out of the way. Um, and then Jurassic Park River Adventure is 25. The two landing rides are both under half an hour, so not super, super long lines, but there are long lines at the things, of course, that we want to do. So I did one of my favorite things here at Universal in their app. They have something called wait time alerts that you can set. You can do as many as you want. So I set wait time alerts for Hagrid's, for Velocicoaster, and for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Basically, you go into the app and say, I want to know if this has an hour long wait, tell me when it's 45 minutes, and they'll send a push notification to your phone. So that's a really cool feature that they have here. So that way you can continuously check the app. I always recommend using the apps when you're in the theme parks, but I love that they can be like, hey, just so you know, Velocicoaster is down from 75 to 55, and I can scoot over there if I'm close by. 
first target acquired. And now we are headed to a little spot to grab something to eat. And I feel like a lot of people overlook this place, but every time I've gone, it's been an actual delight. And it is here in Seuss Landing, which is the next land we're gonna check out in Universal Orlando. Green Eggs and Ham, which is a quick service stand that sells different tater tot dishes, including one that is literally green eggs and ham. And eggs are a breakfast food. So that's what we're gonna get. Here is the menu. They've got a couple different kinds of tots. Pizza, buffalo chicken, Philly, who hash, which actually comes in a little can. But the one I like the most is the green eggs and ham tots, which have green eggs, diced ham, white cheese sauce over tater tots. Really, really yummy. Could be a big shareable snack or a meal for one person. So we're gonna have that for brunch. Another great tip when you are spending your day at Universal is they actually aren't using mobile order as much anymore as they were when the parks first reopened. Um, so it is just, most places are back to your standard walk up and place your order and they can get really, really busy. The lines can get very, very long. So my best advice to you is eat off peak meal times and eat at some underrated places. So it's a little bit before 11 o'clock right now. There's like three parties ahead of me in green eggs and ham. Uh, but if you can eat either early or late, you can avoid some of those long meals, especially at popular places like the Harry Potter restaurants, which is where we're gonna head later. We're gonna try to avoid that long line. Got my green eggs and ham tots. The eggs are green because they have chives in them and then they've got ham and cheddar cheese fondue and it's so good. And then I've got my coffee. I actually like sitting back here as well. It's usually pretty quiet and you kind of sit among Seuss land, which is a really cool themed land and it's very cute in my opinion. I have always enjoyed Dr. Seuss, so this is definitely a little bit of an underrated spot in my opinion. And we're gonna have ourselves a brunch. Mm. Every time I get these, they're so good. The cheddar cheese fondue has definitely like a strong, sharp cheddar flavor. It's not overpowering or anything. I think everyone will like it, but you can taste that it's some good cheddar cheese. The tots here are like, really pillowy but very crispy so they're perfect and then i love the eggs i love chives i like the diced ham it's a perfect breakfast lunch or shareable snack and i'm very glad to be eating them right now with my coffee as a little breakfast break but these are really good tater tots every time they're good every time finished up a delightful meal of green eggs and ham now i'm ready to explore seuss landing a little update on the wait times Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, which is the attraction inside Hogwarts, has dropped to 45 minutes. But this video will go from best day to worst day ever very quickly if I eat tots and then go ride Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. So that's a good sign that that wait time's dropping. I hope Hagrid's drops in a little bit as well. But for now, the very cute attractions here in Seas Landing don't really have long lines. And I'm gonna hop on a couple of them because I'm here for starters. And to my goal, it's ambitious, but I really don't want to wait at most an hour, but ideally 45 minutes or less for everything here. And that's a tall order considering we've got Hagrid's and Velocicoaster on the table, but I believe in us. Cat in the Hat is a dark ride, but it does have a small 36 inch height requirement because of the ride vehicles and the fact that it spins. So maybe I should not go on this right now considering I just ate tots, but it had a posted 10 minute wait and I don't even think it's going to be that. So I better chug this coffee. Cat in the Hat. What was that? No, Cat in the Hat is if you have little kids that like Cat in the Hat or Dr. Seuss or don't can't ride things here because there are a lot of things with tall height requirements, bring them on Cat in the Hat. Is it going to be the best dark ride you ever go on? Are the animatronics going to dazzle you? Probably not for the right reasons. So Universal's animatronics have gotten incredibly amazing. We're going to see it at Velocicoaster in the queue. The animatronics at Hagrid's are amazing. Not their best work. And I love Universal. You guys know that, but not their best work. But oh, 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 someone's here. Speaking of the cat in the hat. Oh, look, she's so excited. 
Hi, cat in the hat. I just it's rode your sad. ride. It you was. Just did his ride. I did. did you like it? I loved it. I'm so glad. I loved oh, it. It was so it. great. You did. Bye, cat yes, in the hat. Oh, and Sam, I am. Come on over. Come over. Come over. Oh, Sam, I am is here. I am from Karina and Sam. Hello, Sam. Okay, well, a little distraction by seeing. Cat in the Hat and Sam I Am. Um, I told Cat in the Hat I just rode his ride and he asked if I liked it and I said I loved it. That kid's is called a white lie. So, little life lesson. Um, I did enjoy it. I do like it. I also like the Seuss Sky in the High trolley, tree, or trolley Train Ride, which is happening above us. I like the Carasusel. And I like One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. I think they're all very cute and very fun. And I would hang around in Seuss Land a little longer, but I just got a notification that Harry Potter and their Forbidden Journey is down to 35 minutes. And while I did just eat green eggs and ham, that's too good to pass up. So since I'm only one land over, I'm gonna scoot, start scooting into Hogsmeade in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The Lost Continent is where we're headed now. It doesn't really have anything right now because the Poseidon show isn't happening. There is Mythos, which is a great sit-down table service restaurant if you want a longer meal. Um, I ate there in a video all about universal food that was not Harry Potter. That was the catch. Um, and it's great food. If you are a sit-down meal kind of person, want some time in the air conditioning, definitely check out Mythos. This is Poseidon's Fury, which is not happening right now, but it's actually fun when it is happening. It's about a 30 plus minute adventure where you go into Poseidon's temple and um, a little bit of it is kind of outdated, um, but there's one effect in there that's super awesome and I, I think it's fun. Mythos is right here. And what, so what you see is that the Lost Continent was an opening day land here at Islands of Adventure and the big attraction was called the Dueling Dragons roller coaster, which was two dragons on a coaster and they were dual. And then when they decided to build the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, the Harry Potter theme took over and it captured that coaster. And it was then a Triwizard Tournament themed coaster where you decided if you wanted to ride the Chinese Fireball or the Hungarian Horntail. It had a really cool queue with the Goblet of Fire. But now that spot is where Hagrid's lives. So the Lost Continent is a little lost right now, you know? It's mostly just shops food and then the one Poseidon's Fury because they also the other thing that used to be here was the Sinbad stunt show that also is is buried in the grave of no longer with us attractions here's the end of the Hagrid's queue it's posted at 80 minutes right now and we're gonna keep watching that along with Velocicoaster the, it's a dicey game though friends because they both are going to shut down if it thunderstorms, which it likely will in the afternoon because it's Florida and the summer. So you either want to go first, you want to rope drop it. If you are a guest staying at a Universal Resort or have the annual pass that gets you into early park hours, you want to rope drop one of those so, or bite the bullet and stand in the long line. But we're going to try to not stand in the long line and still get to ride it without rain. I love this land so much, more than any lands in the whole world. I love the Wizarding World of Harry Potter lands. Uh, of course, we're only gonna stick around here in Hogsmeade today. We're not gonna take the train over to Diagon Alley because we're doing an Islands of Adventure video and you do need a park to park ticket to ride the Hogwarts Express, which if you're a big Harry Potter fan, I definitely recommend doing because it's such a cool effect and it's a great, great way to get across the parks if you're a diehard HP fan like myself. I did a whole video about everything in Harry Potter world. I did it in one day, all the attractions, all the shops, all the eats, we'll link that for you. But right now we are headed over to Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is a super cool technological attraction. 
It is a simulator. It does have a 48 inch height requirement, but it also moves you through giant sets. And you're gonna see a lot of iconic things from the story like the Forbidden Forest, the Chamber of Secrets, Quidditch, Dementors, Basilisk, so much, so much Harry Potter fun. Uh, you are gonna need a locker for this one. It loops you all around. So the lockers are up here. But uh, shall we go to Hogwarts, friends? You start in the dungeons. So of course you're near Snape's office and you can actually see Snape's office if you lean over and look over there. And then it's behind the Witch with the Hump. That is one of the secret passageways that Harry discovers on the Marauder's map, how to get over into Hogsmeade. And then over on the other side, <coughs> have the Mirror of Erised, which is the Mirror of Desire, of course, from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You've got a potions classroom, and if you listen closely, it's very hard to hear, but you can hear a certain student getting scolded. Sorry, Neville. And then you're going to weave through the whole Hogwarts grounds and castle, and I'm telling you, this is the coolest queue of all time. Out here in the herbology section, we've got mandrakes planted right here. You can see this one's little eyes. Hello, sir. How are you? It's been about 18 or so minutes since I got in the line, and now we are officially in the Hogwarts Castle. It's so exciting. I, again, love this queue. There are so many amazing details you must look for. I always look on this statue because I'm like, where's the snake? I always see the badger and the lion. But I don't see the eagle. I bet he's on the other. Should we look on the other statue for the eagle and the snake? I think so. Here are the counters. Of course Gryffindor is winning. Like, Obviously, typical, you know what I mean? Where is the snake? Does anyone know where the snake is? Is it on the back of the statue and I just couldn't see it before? Please someone tell me where the snake is. I'm not as concerned, but also concerned about the eagle for my Ravenclaw friends. Sherbet lemon, cockroach clusters, acid pop, sugar quills, lemon drops. One of those should work. This here. I love all the moving portraits on the wall. Oh, it's my guy Salazar. Hello. Happy to see you. He looks happy to see me too. I expect this is Dumbledore's doing. Hey, buddy. And then here you've got Helga Huffle Huff. Godric Gryffindor is right there. And then if we flip it around a little bit, throwing a Ravenclaw. And honestly, like Salazar's annoyed that people are in his house, like a lot of unwanted guests, and the other founders are yelling at him. Like, no, 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 you should let a bunch of strangers in your house. And Salazar's like, no thanks. And can you fault him for not wanting to throw an impromptu gathering for like literally hundreds of people i don't think you can we have made it into dumbledore's office i like looking into all of the different cases here to see all of dumbledore's gadgets and gizmos of plenty remember when harry's mad at the end of uh, order of the phoenix and he breaks a bunch of them also there's the sword of gryffindor there's the pensieve but back to the end of Order of the Phoenix, I know a lot of people don't like Moody Harry in um, Order of the Phoenix, but I actually love Moody Harry. I love Sassy Harry. Hi, Dumbles. Um, and I appreciate the fact that he's literally watched his friend get murdered and then no one would talk to him or tell him what's going on. You'd be mad too. So just think about that. We have made our way into the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom where Harry, Ron, and Hermione explain the plot of the attraction. Hermione made it snow! I also love the 
evening newspapers they have here. They also have Mobert Escape from Green Gods, which is on the Diagon Alley side. But the plot of this attraction is that you're supposed to be attending a lecture by Professor Binns, but Harry Ron Hermione decide that's boring. So instead, they are going to sneak you onto the Quidditch pitch to watch the game of Quidditch. Got to meet Hermione at the Room of Requirement, where she will do a little magic to get you over there. And then, of course, things go awry. We'll get back to Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. We'll talk about it in just a second. But I realized I lost an earring at some point, which is very embarrassing. So I, or I actually think I felt it fall off on the Hulk. And I hate not wearing earrings. I feel like I'm missing something. So I'm going to buy some earrings. Is it lame if I buy these? They're Hermione's wand. These are Harry's wand. Are these so stupid? Kinda. But like, I kind of like them. The good thing is we were going to go shopping anyway during our adventure today because I don't think a good theme park day is complete without shopping, especially not in the wizarding world because there are so many cool trinkets. You can get house gear, anything from scarves to shirts to sweatshirts to journals and house goods, like not house like Southern house, like house like your home, like home goods, not TJ Maxx. You get it. Um, Christmas ornaments all kinds of decor. This whole section right here, this actually where the lockers used to be, is a straight up Christmas part of it now. And there's so many different ornaments you could get. There's bags. I have a lot of the ornaments. Ooh, do I need a Hedwig statue on sale for $189? They also have these earrings that are your house, but um, there's no Slytherin, which is honestly rude or they're so popular they sold out it has to be one of the two. Ooh, look at these fun studs they're like train ones i kind of like those it's like either a hogwarts ticket the hogwarts express logo or platform nine and three quarters that's kind of fun what do you think you like them not my normal style but hey on brand for being in a theme park harry potter and the forbidden journey took about 30 minutes to get through the queue such a cool queue i think possibly my favorite if not tied for my favorite queue of an attraction of all time spoiler we'll see the other one today now that attraction definitely gets you motion sick but if you're a harry potter fan i feel like you have to ride it at least once just don't drink butterbeer right before because you're going to sit in a seat and then it's on an arm and it's going to flip you around upside down in all different directions again it's going to have screens and live sets but it's really really cool you go to the chamber of secrets you use flu powder you see a quidditch match you see dragons uh, you see the Basilisk, you see the Mentors. I think a must do, especially if you're a Harry Potter person, especially the fact that we could get on in 30 minutes. It's already up to 45 again. So that was great timing. Love that. Love, love, love that wait time alert. That's a definite huge tip when you're at Universal. And speaking of, we just got another alert. So we are gonna leave the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and head on another adventure. Timing couldn't have been more perfect as I was exiting the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, I got a notification that Velocicoaster in Jurassic Park right next door had dropped to a 50-5-0 minute wait, which is what I had set on my little wait time alert, which is amazing considering this is a brand new state-of-the-art best coaster maybe of all time. So we're going to go check out Velocicoaster, which I am so jazzed about. You can see right here, Velocicoaster, 50 minute wait, but we're gonna go grab something. There is a very cool new beverage that you can get only in Jurassic Park in the whole wide world. And we're gonna go grab it to bring into the line with us. I scooted through the land to quickly visit the Natural Selections shop, our little cart right here. There's not a very long line compared to the watering hole, which is right next to Velocicoaster, had a very, very long line. So you can actually come over here. These are two places you can grab the exclusive beer that they made just to excitedly celebrate Velocicoaster's opening. So we're gonna grab one of those as our next snacky treat and bring it with us to face the Raptors. Natural Selections is a really fun snack cart that's got some more unique options than the other ones around. A lot of the other ones have your classic theme park food, but this one has uh, Papa, Papa Rayenas, which have um, a pork filling in them. They're almost, they're kind of like cheeseburger pods, but a little bit different. Um, and then you've got beef empanadas. They have a guava pastry. A, they usually do a fun themed churro here. This one right now is blue themed after Blue the Raptor. You can also grab some fresh fruit. They have tahini with it if you want to add that. And then they've got a couple of different drinks. They've got soft drinks, of course, a couple beers, but they do have the brand new exclusive 
East Lund Nublar IPA right here, which really infuriates me because the Mosasaurus on the tap is eating a great white shark, which feels irresponsible, um, like environmentally, because great white sharks are, I've said this before, but they're an apex predator. They are, you know, at risk and to just feed them to a Mosasaurus feels like a poor idea, but that's not the point of this. The point is this beer is really good and you can only get it here and we're getting it. <laughs> if you've watched my videos before, you know I get hype when there's an exclusive beer. I just think that's such a cool thing. I'm not even normally an IPA fan. And this one definitely has the hoppiness that you associate with an IPA, but it's also very fruity and light. So it's a perfect, nice, refreshing beer on a hot day. And again, it could literally be the worst beer in the world, but if they were like, you can only buy this in Seuss Landing, I'd be like, give me it. So I guess marketing works on me. You may be wondering why I didn't just go to the watering hole, which is right next to the entrance of Velocicoaster, and I walked all the way across the land to go to Natural Selections. Well, that's because the watering hole gets very long lines and it moves very, very slowly. When I got this beer for the Universal versus Disney snack throwdown, snack down, if you will, I waited like all, 45 minutes to get this beer. And I just waited maybe 10. And I saw how long the line was at watering hole and I said, not again, not again. The epic jams of John Williams as you walk through this land is so phenomenal. I can hardly stand it. But here we go. I'm so excited. This coaster is very, very new. And it is so much fun. I could scream and I will scream. They do, they do have single rider here. However, this is one attraction I definitely don't recommend visiting single rider. For one, your line, your wait can still be very, very long just because a lot of people go through the regular queue and they prioritize them for two. And the main thing is that you will not get to see the raptors in the queue, which are one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a theme park. And you do not want to miss them, I promise. You will have to forgive me. We are all learning together. At this point with this one, I am literally, my job is to come to theme parks. And so most of my advice is tried and true. And I have scoped it out and researched it. But when you have a new attraction, we're all learning together on the best times to ride this. So I will say the downfall of this attraction is that the queue is out here where it's really hot. So keep that in mind, even if the line's not that long, some of it you are going to wait out here in the direct sunlight. I'd also advise you, remember the, the weather. We have to think about the weather. And I would rather get in a line when it's 50, 60 minutes when it's hot and get to ride it than have it shut down due to weather in the afternoon. The story of Velocicoaster is that you are in Jurassic World, the theme park but before the movie. So you know how Claire says they need more teeth and that's why they invent the Indominus Rex. This is the step that they take before the Indominus Rex is they think, oh, more teeth, more thrills. We're gonna send you on a raptor run. Of course, Owen Grady, AKA Star-Lord, AKA Andy Dwyer, says this is a terrible idea. These raptors are not good. But that is the plot of this attraction, is that you are in Jurassic World, the theme park, and you are gonna go on a raptor run roller coaster adventure that they made for the theme park. Back inside, thank goodness, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it is hot out in that queue at the peak heat of the day. I do not recommend it, but I'm about to ride one of the best rides ever made, so I can't complain, but I'm gonna warn you that it is hot. Um, it, I was outside for a little under 30 minutes and now I am back in the indoor queue where there are fans, which is excellent. This is the coolest queue of all time. There's so many cool Easter eggs if you're a Jurassic Park fan. You'll actually see the Velocicoaster train run by here. Uh, this is one of my favorite Easter eggs. If you look at this tray, it's got some notes and then also a glass of water on it, which shakes when the coaster goes by as a nod, of course, to the water rippling in Jurassic Park. It is so, so cool. Uh-oh, uh-oh, red, red. Ah! The raptors.
a lot more Easter eggs and details about this attraction. But if you look in these cages right here, you can see books by Dr. Ian Malcolm, Dr. Alan Grant, and Dr. Ellie Sattler, which I think is such a cool detail. And you can see some of the toys and uh, the armbands and everything that people wear to deal with the raptors. But most importantly in this queue, when you get into this room, you actually see the raptors. These are truly some of the most incredible and realistic animatronics I have ever seen. They're amazing. Hi, I want to pet you and free you. I love you. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. She's mad. is unreal first things first the reason they are so yelly at you or like so insistent that you remember something about your locker is because they're double-sided lockers so you don't pick it up you don't pick your stuff up in the same place you dropped it off to keep guest flow so that's why they're like remember the color remember the number remember the dinosaur remember one thing about your locker section and that will help you find your locker when you get out because it's not gonna be physically in the same place but two I was on and off in exactly an hour. Um, I obviously to put my phone in a locker. It was about 40 minutes to the lockers and then a few more minutes to get through the whole pre-show and load. So I would say my whole wait was around 45, 50 minutes, which for the newest attraction in Orlando, I will take it. That's amazing. And third, that attraction is so good. I want to cry. It is the most fun coaster I've ever been on. You can request seats um, as long as they're able to fit you safely on the dock. Um, the front is the coolest for view, but the back is the best for thrills. So do what you want to do. I've ridden both. Both are amazing. You cannot go wrong with that ride. And last thing I will say, I hadn't heard this before. I think it kind of like took a second or like it had never lined up timing wise. But as I was getting off, I heard uh, Claire say, Owen, Owen. Uh, this is Claire. There's something that needs our attention over at Jurassic Park River Adventure, which is funny, but they're looping the whole land in. What a ride. Am I right? And you exit Velocicoaster through the Discovery Center. There's all kinds of really cool Velocicoaster exclusive merchandise. There's cool Jurassic Park in general merchandise. You're going to want to check this out if you've got a Jurassic or a dinosaur fan in your family. But I am literally obsessed with that attraction and you should definitely prioritize it on your Islands of Adventure day. We're at the peak part of the day where there are a lot of people and a lot of long lines. Like Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls has a two hour wait right now. Kong has a 90 minute wait. Hagrid still has a, an 80 minute wait, um, which is the big one we wanna do still. Jurassic Park River Adventure has a 45 minute wait, which is on my list, which is not terribly long, but now's a good time to do some non-ride stuff to kill some time. So we're gonna go do one of my actual favorite things in a theme park, which is the Raptor Encounter here in Jurassic Park. You can meet not only full-grown Velociraptors like Blue and the newest Velociraptor, Bravo, you can meet a baby Velociraptor. So we're gonna go meet the baby right now and then get back in line to meet the big one. Hello, how are Hello, you? Hello, I'm good, how are it's you? very, very good to meet you. Oh, hi. Hello, uh, this here is Tango. Hi, uh, six Tango. Old, baby Velociraptor. You're very cute. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. you're speaking about Tango. Well, Both of you. She's very, very cute. And she called me cute. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Tango. Me cute. Me too, then. Don't rain on my parade. <laughs> hi, Tango. Oh, this is our six-month-old baby Velasa Raptor. She was born right in the Discovery Center, right over there. Right over there. Oh, my goodness. Big smiles, everybody. Say tea. Focus, focus. Good girl. I met a baby Velociraptor. I've actually never met the baby. I always meet the big ones. And we're gonna go do that now because the big ones are scary and I like it. Um, but if you've got little ones, they might like the baby more. And if you're just a Velociraptor fan, why not go meet a baby Velociraptor? It literally took five minutes. But now we're gonna get in this line, which I promise will move quickly. 
and we're gonna go meet a big raptor. Hi, Bravo. All the way on that blue line. Are you gonna be doing a selfie today? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think Raptor Encounter is so fun and it's a must do on my day here in Jurassic Park because if you're going to come to Jurassic Park, don't you want to meet a dinosaur? Don't be ridiculous. Yes is the answer. And also, I've said this before, but like the first time I did this was on camera and I saw all these adults get scared by the Raptor and I was like, idiots. And then I went up and screamed my head off because it is legit so scary, but it's so fun. And the Raptor handler was very funny today and she was making lots of jokes about how like you can't outrun the raptor, but you can outrun your kids. So that's that's something to think about. And to, if you have any meat or snacks, give them to the kid that's made you mad today. So she was very funny. That's a must do. And it usually doesn't have a long run. Like I waited five minutes both times. That's a fun thing to do in the middle of the day. All right, we're going to scoot out of Jurassic Park for a little bit and go back over to Hogsmeade. The wait times are very long right now because it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, middle of the day, very, very long lines. The longest lines are actually for Skull Island Ray of Kong and Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls. Now, Dudley Do-Right's is in no way part of my best day ever at Islands of Adventure because you may know I hate water rides. So that's a water ride, as is Popeye and Bluto's Build Dretch Barges. That one is a 45 minute wait. That's not too bad. This would be a good time to go ride Popeye's if that was on your list. If you want to see Popeye's, you can watch my video where I rode all the water rides and ranked them by how wet you get. Um, but that's not for me. So we're gonna go over and do some more fun things in Hogsmeade. Scooting into Hogsmeade, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Of course, we've already done Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, whose wait is up to close to an hour now. So I'm glad that we did that one when it was about 30 minutes. Flight of the Hippogriff, not a must do for most people, but if you're a Harry Potter fan, I definitely recommend riding it for the Buckbeak animatronic. That one's at 45 minutes though, which is definitely too long for that. Um, and then we want to ride Hagrid's, of course, which is at an 80 minute wait right now, eight zero minutes. I am kind of considering getting in line soon just to avoid the potential rainstorm, but I'm going to hold out a little bit. And then other things I think are must do's when you're in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, wand magic, drinking a butterbeer, eating a snack. We're going to do all of these things. We're going to do them right now. Right now, there is about a 20 minute wait for the Ollivander's Wand Experience. They have an experience at both Diagon Alley and here. When I did the Wand Experience, it was right when the parks reopened and they were only letting in one party at a time. So it guaranteed me, I was the only one in there, that I would be the one chosen for the wand ceremony. Now they are at capacity again. They can let in multiple parties. So you have no guarantee if you're gonna be the person chosen. It is still really cool and it's really fun. And I definitely recommend getting a wand but you may not want to wait the whole time for the show. But you know what? I like the show. I like feeling the magic. Let's get in there. Now, the nice wizard outside told me that there's a maximum of 27 people in there. And again, one person's going to be chosen to do the whole ceremony thing. If you are chosen, you'll be presented with your wand. You don't have to buy that wand. You don't have to buy any wand. But you can also be like, I don't really want a wand chosen for me. I want Harry Potter's wand or Hermione Granger's or I guess Ron Weasley's. I don't care for Ron Weasley. Don't come for me. He's a terrible friend. Um, so that is the wand experience, but it is really cool. He said, uh, the, the wizard here said that it dies down in the evening, but in my opinion, if the point of you going to the wand experience is to see it and then buy your wand afterwards, whether you're the one chosen or you just want to do the wand experience and then go buy your wand, why would you do it at the end of the night? You're not going to get have any time to play with your wand. So I think if you want to do the wand magic, either do this during early park hours, if um, you get done with Hagrid's and Velocicoaster, or go buy a wand early in the day um, and you, then you can do the magic. But I have a wand already in my backpack. I'm just going to see the show and then we'll do a little wand magic together. All right, from right there, we'd like you to water those flowers by waving your wand at them and say, Agua menti. Agua menti? Agua menti. Agua menti. Uh, interesting, but not exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> Let us see if we can brighten the room up a bit by illuminating the tip of your wand. So concentrate on the top and say Lumos. Lumos. Videologics, Ricotto. All right, that show's cool. 
um, they're probably going to pick a kid. Sorry to all my Harry Potter adults, um, but they most likely pick a kid to be the one that does the whole experience, but you can watch it and get excited by it, and then they lead you into the shop where you can then go on shopping. Now, this is not something I would recommend waiting for more than 30, 45 minutes. Um, just on the, you know, if, if you really want to do it, they can't guarantee that it's going to be you or your kid, so that is up to you. I probably wouldn't have waited. I waited like 15 minutes to watch it and it was cute. And now they're going to lead me into the wand shop where I could go buy my wand. I definitely think whether you're coming to Islands of Adventure or Universal Studios Florida and you're a Harry Potter fan, wand shopping, using the wands are absolutely a must do. It is so much fun and it is so cool. And it's like a very quintessential Harry Potter thing. I will say, as you can see, the store is very, very crowded right now, especially around the wand display. Uh, that's probably because our show just let out. But if you can do any kind of like pre-planning and know what wands you want by watching other videos or looking up what wands they have available, you could get in and out of here faster. If you also came in the morning, you could get in and out of here faster. Here are the wands. There are many to choose from. So you can choose your favorite character or you could be like, hey, this one looks cool. Um, there's Narcissa Malfoy's. Is that Peter Pettigrew's? That's so unfortunate because it's such a cool wand and he's such a trash character, you know? Like, I can't have Peter Pettigrew's wand, but I like it, but I can't. There's Voldemort's wand. Elder wand. Hmm. McGonagall, I believe, that one. I also have Lupin's wand. I think that Lupin's is the one in my backpack, but I don't see Lupin's out here right now. Or Tom's. Is this one Harry's? It is. That's Harry's. Is that Hermione's? Wow. This is either embarrassing for me or very impressive. That's Sirius's. It is. Wow. Uh, Draco? Yep. Why is his boring? He's cool. I know. He and, he and Pettigrew should switch. Yeah. Here is the rest of the story. This is a great shop if you want to get some basic stuff like robes and t-shirts and different house apparel and things. Um, another interesting thing, I did just talk to the friendly witch back at the wands and she told me they no longer really do the collector's wands. They do a couple and you can get them at some of the bigger stores. Um, like at the front of the park but as far as they used to sell a bunch of characters like fred and george and molly weasley and they weren't interactive ones that you could do the magic with they were just like cool ones to look at and they don't really do those anymore um, but this is also the shop that you can get the robes at on this side of universal you can get a lot of shirts and i think when it's your best day ever if you're a harry potter fan you've got to get something from your house um, for me i'm a slytherin proudly I own a lot of these things. I really like this. Um, I've always eyed this cardigan. It's unfortunately $90 and I live in Florida, but it has like the Slytherin band on it. So I'm big into that. The robes are $139 now. And I, again, live in Florida. So I don't know if that is a good purchase for me. Um, and then the other thing I'm obsessed with, and maybe today's the day, they have these um, quitted shirts. And then on the back, they can personalize them with your name. Like, do I need that? It's pretty cool. Okay, here's the thing. We want to do wand magic. We want to get a butterbeer. We want to have a snack. We want to eat things. We also want to ride Hagrid's, and I've been hoping it would drop, but I'm also looking at this. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in the single rider line. Um, I hope it's open. Sometimes it does fill to capacity, but we're going to try and jump in the single rider line. So that way at least I get to ride it. I'm a single rider, so I actually don't care one way or the other if I go single rider or not. Um, but I would advise you, if you've never ridden it, to not be in single rider so you can ride with your friends and family. I talked to a lovely team member who said they are running single rider. It is open. Sometimes, again, it does fill to capacity, but she said the line starts down here so you can get a locker. So that's where we're headed. I asked if it skips the pre-show or what parts of the queue it skips. She said it skips everything, but they're not even running their full pre-show yet, so it doesn't really matter to me. This is one thing you do want to be aware of here at Velocicoaster is your single riderness doesn't branch off until post lockers. So you do need to come down to the very end of the queue and get in line. It actually isn't that long right now, which is very exciting. The single rider line was blocked off, but there were team members standing there and I just asked if I could ride single. She said absolutely and let me in. Wow, we are moving and grooving and you know what? They're moving and grooving too. They're not actually stopping until like the vegetable patch. So 
I would guess like maybe 45 minutes to an hour for that part of the queue, maybe less. You're gonna see a ton of different creatures from the Harry Potter stories. You're gonna see Blasted and Scroots, which is a deep cut from a book fans. You're gonna see centaurs. You're going to see Fluffy the three-headed dog. You're gonna see pixies. You're gonna see the flying car. It's so green. I love it. Okay, friends, we are all learning together. I stood in the single rider line for about 30 minutes and barely moved. So I talked to a team member out front and she said that the regular queue would likely be much shorter than 80 minutes and probably faster than standing in single rider. So that's what we're gonna do. She said if it was 80 minutes, it would be like all the way out of the queue. Hagrid's motorbikes are two per row. It's not that far back, it goes to right here. So we'll see, we're gonna clock it. I do love this queue. I think it is so cute. Especially right here, you've got Hagrid's house and the giant pumpkins. But you can see that there are some creatures up ahead that have been big time snacking on snacks. The regular queue is absolutely moving a lot faster than the single rider queue was. I've been in line for not that long at all and I've already made quite a bit of progress. So we are all learning together, friends, the secrets to having the best day here may not include the single rider line. The story behind this attraction is that you are headed to go to a Care of Magical Creatures lesson with Hagrid, but you know Hagrid, he wants to kick it up a notch. So Hagrid and Arthur Weasley teamed up. Arthur took Sirius's motorbike that he left to Hagrid and he duplicated it, which is actually a ride vehicle. You're, one person um, rides on the bike, one person rides on the sidecar, and it's two by two all the way down. It's a really, really cool ride vehicle, but I do definitely recommend checking out that test seat out at the front because it is a very unique uh, ride vehicle that not everyone is going to be comfortable in. Y'all. That ride is so much fun. I'm so obsessed with it. And I truly don't know if I like that one or Velocicoaster more, I think. I think Velocicoaster is definitely more thrilling because you go upside down a bunch, but the drop on this and the acceleration, this one feels like it's longer. They're both so amazing, you have to ride them. And also, I only waited 45 minutes on a posted 80 minute wait. So, it's a lie. Maybe not always, but it was way close up. So if you see it where it's not all the way back into the next land, you can probably guess that it's gonna be a little bit lower than the posted weight, or at least it's posted at 80. It's only 45 minutes, which again was my goal, not to wait longer than that for anything. And that ride is so good. So I'm so glad we got to do it, uh, especially if there's any inclement weather coming. It's a little breezy, but amazing. So what did we learn about Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motor Rank Adventure TM? Single rider is not faster. The team members told me that uh, upon talking to them afterwards, they said it can take a very long time. The woman that they sat with me, because I was a single, waited over an hour in the single rider line. And again, I waited 45 minutes to post an 80 minute wait. So while I'm sad, I did stand in the single rider line for a little bit. Better me than you, so you can use this advice next time that you're at Islands of Adventure. So my tip, rope drop this one, come for early park admission and get here first. But it doesn't seem like single rider is the way to go here. We are going to feed again. Uh, I'm taking some of my best theme park advice and going to eat at an off-peak time. It's about 4.40 right now, which is definitely very early for dinner or very late for lunch. Hello, Sirius. How are you? You're doing well. Um, and we are gonna head into the three broomsticks. The line is not very long. Earlier today at peak lunchtime, I looked at it and it was going all the way down towards the bathrooms all the way that way. We don't want that. So we are gonna get in line right now. They are not doing mobile order anymore, so you'll just go in and order. Um, but we're gonna do it together and we'll see how long it takes. It took about 20 minutes for me to get inside the three broomsticks. It's so cool in here. It really feels like you stepped inside the Harry Potter story when you come in these restaurants. I absolutely love them. Um, and everything is back to normal. There's no more mobile ordering. So you will actually just keep waiting in line until you get to a register where a witcher wizard will take your order and then you'll pick up your own food. Um, as you can see, because I'm eating an early, early dinner, um, there are lots and lots of tables available. The choke point is of course waiting to order for your food. So. The menu here is very like, we're at a barbecue in Harry Potter. That's how I would describe it. Fish and chips are definitely the signature here, but then they've also got rotisserie smoked chicken. They've got ribs, they've got chicken and ribs platter, smoked turkey leg, um, the beef pasties that I enjoy, a couple salads. And then you can also do the great feast. 
which serves four for $70, and then for each additional person it's $17.99. But on the Great Feast, you're gonna get the ribs and the chicken and corn on the cob and roasted potatoes. So if you've got a party that eats a lot, that could be a great choice. Okay, I am finally sitting down with my food. Total weight to get my food, to get through that line, order and uh, sit, get my food and sit down an hour. And you saw how short it was. Now, I don't really mind because I like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and if I'm gonna eat quick service and I think a lot of people feel this way, they want it to be Harry Potter. But that's a very long time. However, you're probably gonna wait a decent amount at their quick service locations. Um, it's, it's the summer. It is what it is. My best advice would be either to come early um, but that's also when you should rope drop or late, late, or I mean, I ate off me off peak meal time and it still took a long time. So, but probably not compared to what it was like at two o'clock when the line was down pretty far. I went for the kids portion of fish and chips because I like that they do that. And then it's got their house made tartar sauce, a lemon. It's a big piece of fish, some chips, grapes. Um, I asked for a cup of water and then, you know, I had to get a butter beer. You have to have a butter beer on your best day ever in a universal park. And yeah, I got the hot one because I love the hot one and the hot one is now available all year round. I definitely recommend if you are gonna wait in a long line to eat here, getting a butter beer here because there are also very long lines out at the carts outside. I also wanna point out that um, shared condiments are back and I can have all of this malt vinegar if I want it. Oh yeah, I love malt vinegar on chips and the fries and the fish. Chips are our fries, I'm hungry. Um, and then I'm gonna squeeze the fresh lemon on there. This fish and chips is so good. I'm very excited to have this for my dinner. Mm. It is really, really good. Nice flaky crust, a nice mild white fish. I like that they give you the house made tartar sauce and the fresh lemon as well as the malt vinegar. Condiment wise, it does beat the UK. I don't know if flavor wise, I'd have to eat them back to back to tell you, but it definitely compares to the UK. My favorite thing on the menu here. Ah, butter beer. Like drinking a hot cupcake. It goes against everything I stand for, which is sickly sweet things. It tastes like a hot cupcake and it's delicious. Now I think the most popular butterbeer is the frozen. You can get that as well. You can also get the regular butterbeer, which I enjoy quite a bit as well. You can also get butterbeer ice cream here and butterbeer clotted cream. So lots of butterbeer options, but if you're gonna sit in here and spend the time to wait in line to eat here, you might as well get your butterbeer while you're at it. All right. Finished my dinner at the Three Broomsticks. Do I think you should wait an hour to eat fast food in the theme park? I can't really tell you, only you can make that decision. Do I wanna wait an hour to eat fast food in the theme park? Not really, frankly. I don't wanna wait an hour for anything in the theme park. Um, and I try hard to tell you guys how to avoid waiting in lines. Um, but with food at Universal, that seems like that's gonna be part of the deal, so like I said, go to Mythos if you want to have a sit-down meal and use that hour sitting down. Um, try to eat at even weirder times. Go really, really early. Go right when they switch over to lunch at 11. Um, or go for breakfast, maybe. Um, or go somewhere less popular than the Three Room Six because the Harry Potter restaurants are definitely the most popular. And while they are good and I enjoy them because I love Harry Potter, you're probably going to wait longer for that than somewhere else. But maybe not that much longer. I did see some long lines today. I wish I had better advice on that one. I also had a plan to do one of two things when my uh, meal was over. I was either gonna do a little wand magique because I haven't gotten to play with my wand yet today, um, or I was gonna ride Jurassic Park River Adventure because we still haven't done that, which is about one of, it's about the only water ride I will willingly go on because I love Jurassic Park. Um, and I got one of those notifications from the app that had dropped down from an hour when I was coming in to eat, down to 15 minutes, one five. So now I got to hop to Jurassic Park. I come to Universal to go away from my fears and look what this backpack is. And anyway, um, as a little wait time update, like I said, Jurassic Park River Adventure is one five. Hagrid's still 70. Velocicoaster still 60, but as we pointed out, neither of those were as long as they said when I did them. Um, Hulk has dropped quite a bit. It's at 45, Spider-Man's at 25. Those were both well over an hour for most of the day after we did them. Um, so things are starting to drop. Kong is still at 80. Uh, Forbidden Journey is under 45. 
So it's six o'clock right now. People are starting to dwindle out. People are starting to, to peter on, but not us. Just for comparison, I'm not gonna eat at the Burger Digs, even though I do actually very much like the Burger Digs. I think Universal does a classic theme park cheeseburger very well. Um, but just to compare, here's the line for Burger Digs at six o'clock. And you just saw me wait an hour to get my food at Three Broomsticks. Harry Potter restaurants are definitely the most popular. And while you could still wait a not small amount of time to eat other places, I just want you to compare that. Just know that in your brain and you make the decision that is in your heart. I cannot make that decision for you. All right, it is time for Jurassic Park River Adventure. 15 minutes, I can't believe it. 15, one, five. It was 45 earlier, it was 60 earlier. And now we are gonna go to Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park River Adventure is very fun and it is a water ride. So normally I don't think those two things go together. I did a whole video about how much I don't care for water rides. There's some other ones here that maybe you would have chosen to do those instead of wait at the three broomsticks, Popeye and Budo's Bill Dratch Barges and or Dudley do Rights Rips Off Falls. Not for me. Anyway, Jurassic Park River Adventure is a little journey through Jurassic Park and it is themed after the book Jurassic Park and the movie, but um, in the book they went on a boat ride as opposed to the movie, as you know, if you've seen it, they go on a jeep ride. And they decided to do a boat ride for the attraction because they said they would never be uh, able to come close to what Steven Spielberg did with the jeep ride in the films. Wait, I am not dressed for this attraction, now am I? Water ride chic, thank you. Someone in the comments on my water park video, because I do read the comments, um, the nice and the not nice ones, um, someone was like, why would you even go on water rides if you're gonna wear a rain jacket and a hat? What's the point? The point is I like the ride, I like dinosaurs, I like this music, I like this movie and theme. I don't like getting wet though. So I have to make a risk assessment on every water ride I do. Is the funness greater than the wetness? And if the answer is no, I'm not going on that water ride. But luckily for Jurassic Park, the answer is yes. I actually got pretty wet and I'm, I'm sad because it wasn't even on the big drop because I hid in my rain jacket. They wouldn't let me wear my hat, but you know where I got wet? At the very beginning when the things spray up, I was in the second row and I got my hair all wet and now I'm sad. But not that sad because I actually do really enjoy that attraction. I think it's really fun. If you're a Jurassic Park fan, definitely check it out, especially because I like the big T-Rex at the end. Now that we have enjoyed ourselves on Jurassic Park River Adventure, it really is a fun attraction. Uh, so I'm glad I did that. We are going back to Hogsmeade. One, it's about, you know, getting near 6.30 and the sun will set at some point and Hogsmeade is really cool at night. But I also wanna do a little wand magic and I wanna ride Hagrid's at night maybe. I maybe wanna ride Velocicoaster at night maybe. The world is our oyster, friends. Now, this would be a good time if you hadn't already ridden Popeyes or Ripsaw Falls to ride. Those are both pretty low right now compared to where they were the rest of the day. I also want to talk a little bit about early park admission. Again, I think it is a, if you're going to come to Universal from Disney, I really think staying in a Universal Resort for a night or two is a very good idea for starters. All of the resorts are walkable, almost all of them. They all have transportation and most of them are walkable to the parks, which makes it really easy to get here. All of them come with the perk of the early park admission where you can get into the park early and ride Hagrid's or Gringotts if you're going over to the other park. Um, and again, Velocicoaster isn't listed, but I saw that it had a wait time in the app this morning. So you can get to jump on a lot of people and get on those rides, have a good time. And then if you stay at their more expensive resorts, you actually get free express pass which is their fast pass here at Universal. You normally have to pay for it, and it can be upwards of over $100 per person on top of your ticket. And if you stay at one of their um, premier resorts, everybody in your party gets it for free for their entire stay, including their check-in and check-out day. 
It's a huge perk. It doesn't work on Velasco and it doesn't work on Hagrid's, but it works everywhere else for the most part. And you can save a lot of time in line by having that perk. I definitely recommend if you're gonna do Universal Day, if you can stay at one of those resorts. And they are priced, uh, the one I have done a review at is Royal Pacific, which I paid a couple hundred dollars for the night, which is close to a, the equivalent of a Disney moderate. And I got free express pass. We will link both my resort tour and my video where I saw how many rides I could do with said express pass in this video as well. Long story short, staying at the Universal Hotels, I know it can kind of be a pain to like pack up if you're staying at Disney to come over here for a night or two, but I'm telling you, if you want to get everything done in these parks, the ability to get here early and get some of the big rides done or get that express pass, I'm telling you, it's a really, really big game changer. Magic time! I'm very excited to do magic. I really think it's fun. I like doing it every time, even though I've done it before. I think it's just very exciting. And if you've got your Wanda Ollivanders today, you're gonna to wanna to do some magic, so let's go do it. I also wanna point out that there's literally no one in line for Ollivanders right now. The, the nice wizard here said the odds of you being in there alone are very small, because likely someone will walk up before the show starts, but, but, they're not impossible. <laughs> Okay, we are at one of my favorite spells. It is Aloha Mora, but I really like this one outside the bookshop. So you angle your feet the way it's pointing. You can find these by using a map uh, where all these are that come in your map box. And then the middle right there is how you should move your wand. And the outside is the words. But also I just noticed this awesome e Easter egg, The Secrets of the Darkest Art. That's the book that Hermione uses to figure out what horcruxes are. I've never seen that one before. Anyway, great. Great Easter egg. Aloha Mora. <gasps> I did it, I magic. I knew it. <gasps> All right, here's another one. So this one's really fun because it's Ascendio and Descendio. And you're actually gonna be moving the tape measure on the tux here outside Glad Rags. Um, so since it's up, I think I need to lower it by doing Descendio. 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 There we go. Amazing magic, magic, magic. And now we need to lift it up by saying Ascendio. Ascendio. <gasps> I did it. And here outside Dogweed and Death Cap, the flower shop, we are going to do Herbivicus. 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 I did it. Ah. I've literally done these all before and I still get so excited when they do things. Weather delay on Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. Now I am very glad that we waited to ride Hagrid's earlier. It doesn't look, I mean, it does not look good outside. I can hear the motorbikes running, but they have dumped the queue, it seems. So they're gonna have to wait for this to pass over. I hope it does, because I really wanted to do Hagrid's and Velocicoaster at night, or at least one of them. Um, but I'm really glad we did them both. But that is what I'm talking about. Yes, this line will be much shorter right before the end of the park, but weather is a concern. So if those are rides you wanna do, you need to prioritize them. We, however, are gonna keep rocking and rolling with our magic and exploring Hogsmeade. Revelio, all right. Revelio. Revelio. Oh my goodness, who's, oh my goodness, a chocolate frog. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Speaking of chocolate frogs, should we get a chocolate frog? Probably. Oh! <laughs> Yes, you've inspired us, sir. We are going into Honey Dukes in a moment. One thing I will say is you will see a couple people kind of lingering right here. That's not a bad move if the weather is looks like it's gonna clear out soon because when they reopen the queue, you can get in there pretty darn quick. Now, I will say this about Hagrid specifically, it is a very technologically advanced attraction and it does have a lot of downtime. So I have seen it before where it goes down for weather and then it just never comes back up. I hope that doesn't happen, but it is possible. So I do think you may have to just wait in a little bit longer line for this one, or like I said, get that early park admission and rope drop that one if you stay at a hotel. 
This is another one of my favorites. It's Arresto Momentum, and it's with the pixies right here. Let's see if I can do it. Arresto Momentum. Arresto Momentum. Arresto Momentum. There we go. Did it. Magic. It's real. I really think the wands are so fun. There are more magic spots over at Diagon Alley. There's a lot more because you've got all of Diagon Alley and some in Nocturne Alley. Um, so there's like double how many there are on this side. But of course, they'll work both places if you're park hopping. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, I recommend park hopping because then you get to use the Hogwarts Express. But I think these are really, really fun. It's a great activity to be able to do in between some of the bigger rides. In the busy times, you may have to wait for a few people to do the spells in front of you. But I think as a Harry Potter fan, this is like the coolest thing that I get to literally do magic. Okay, my little hippity hop friend here has inspired me to go into Honey Dukes. Of course, this is the candy shop that is a treat for all of the youths in Hogsmeade when they go on their little vacays. Because you know what kids love? Sugar. And uh, you can get a lot of different things in here. You can get chocolate frogs, which I love getting because they all have a collectible trading card in them. That is part of my favorite thing about them. So I'm going to get one of these because I enjoy them. I like to put them in my freezer whenever I need a little chocolate nosh, but I really like the cards. Uh, you can get bulk candy. They have some different things here that you can try. They've got Birdie Bots Every Flavored Beans, and they literally mean every flavor. Um, they've got fudge flies. Got fizzing whizbees, exploding bonbons, peppermint toads. Honey Dukes also has an awesome bakery case. This is where you can get pumpkin pasties and ginger newts and fudge and cupcakes and all cauldron cakes, all kinds of things. So back behind Honey Dukes, there's this really cool window um, and this really cool window. And like, no one's ever back here. A wizard's back here. He's he's going on his Ollivanders break um but i like to come back here and eat my snacks also the it's behind the three broomsticks and you can hear the dishes cleaning themselves and look, see the dishes cleaning themselves if you look in the window um, but i in addition to my chocolate frog got a pumpkin cake from the uh, bakery case because i love pumpkin it's one of my favorite things i love pumpkin pasties which i was gonna get and then i saw they had pumpkin cakes um so i'm gonna give this a whirl for dessert Do I just like Harry Potter? Because it's like pumpkin season all year. Maybe. The fall is really when I shine. So it's a nice spice cake, pumpkin cake, and then there's frosting in it. And around it, the frosting is a little too sweet for me, but the not sweetness of the pumpkin is balancing it nicely. And it feels like there's like citrus. Like, it smells and tastes a little lemony, which is nice, because I love lemon as well. <laughs> Good. All right, and now I'm very excited to open up my chocolate frog. See, it's literally a milk chocolate frog, and it's wrapped up. So it's a good, these are a great take home as long as they're not gonna melt. Like I wouldn't put them in your checked bag, baggage, but if you can bring them in your carry-on, these are a fun take home because they're wrapped and like, they're wrapped around the whole box too, so. But I'm in it for the card today. <gasps> Could it be, oh my goodness, Albus Dumbledore. Where did he go? He can't stick around all day. He's got things to do. Wow, what a time to be alive. Albus Dumbledore, brilliant and often controversial headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Albus Dumbledore TM is the most famous for his 1945 defeat of Grindelwald and his steadfast champion of Harry Potter TM, the boy who lived. Dumbledore's self-proclaimed proudest achievement, however, was featuring was being featured on a famous chocolate frog TM card. Along with being able to put the wait time alerts on the app, you can also do open or close. Um, I guess you can't do close. You can do open if an attraction is closed. So you can say, hey, notify me when Hagrid's opens back up. And I haven't gotten that notification, but I also set Flight of the Hippogriff, which is kind of a kid's coaster here in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but it has a very cool Hippogriff animatronic and it has a very cool view of the castle. So it's one I recommend to my HP fans. And since it just reopened and it told me it had a 15 minute wait, why not? While well, we wait for the others to open back up. I'd also like to point out that 
Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey has gone back up to 75 minutes. That is likely because it's an indoor attraction and when all the outdoor attractions are closed, the indoor ones go up higher. That's just what happens. But we've got a short way to fly to the Hippogriff, so we're gonna go say hello to Buckbeak. It's a little more exciting than like the Barnstormer, it's longer, but it's not quite like Big Thunder level or anything. Flight of the Hippogriff really is cute and it, it always has more zip than I think it does when you look at it. It's definitely taller than any of the other smaller kid coasters like over at Disney. So I think it's fun. If it doesn't have a long line, why not? Especially again, to see the Buckbeak animatronic. When I was in line, they were like, sorry, our line is up to 25 minutes now, but it was still only like 10 for me because I was in the front. If you see an attraction open back up, jump in line quickly. Otherwise, a lot of people are going to jump in line quickly. Well, friends, there's only about an hour of park time left and a huge storm is rolling in. It's thundering, it's lightning. Any of the outdoor attractions that had opened back up are back closed again. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it, but I had a fabulous day here at Islands of Adventure and I hope you learned a lot about how to have a perfect day for you at Islands of Adventure. What did we learn today, friends? We learned get here early. If you're not doing early park admission, head over to Marvel Landing. Make sure to use that wait time alert and that open alert on the Universal app. Don't do single rider at Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. But we had such a, such a great day. We got to do everything in Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We got to do everything that we wanted to over in Jurassic Park. Marvel dabbled in a little bit of Seuss. It's so much fun. I hope you did. I hope you learned a lot. Let us know what questions you have about Universal in the comments, what videos you want to see next. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.